Welcome back to the channel. Now I want you to understand the property market the same way that I do so you can understand everything that's going on because there's a lot of misinformation and disinformation out there that could affect the decisions that you make about where you're going to live, when you're going to buy, will you invest, where you invest. Now there are three big lies generated by politicians that are doing the rounds around the media at the moment. And these three lies actually originate with the Greens party at the moment. I'm not going to make any comments whether I like the Greens or don't like the Greens. It's not about that it's simply about facts and you can make up your own mind whether or not this is a lie now lie number one take a look at this interview by max chandler from the Greens. We just don't think that migration is a uh, major cause of the housing crisis. Let's mm. be very clear uh, that what we know is that there were a million vacant properties on the night of the census in 2021. A right. million vacant properties. I, I just want to be very clear. We have enough homes for people to live in. We have enough construction mm. materials to build the homes for the new people coming to this country. Now you can clearly see in that interview, he says that there are one million homes vacant in Australia. And he says that we do not have a housing crisis. He says there's a million homes there, we can easily house all Australians. Well, this is completely untrue because he actually states a statistic from the 2021 census, which did show that 1 million homes in Australia were vacant on the night of that census. However, let's break down that 1 million homes. I'm gonna put a link to a report by SGS Economics that breaks that 1 million homes down. Now about 50% of those homes, the residents were not home. Now this could be that they were at a barbecue with friends, this could be that they were on an overseas trip. This could have been a local trip. They were staying at a hotel. This could have been that they were living overseas as expats for maybe one or two years. But these were vacant homes. These homes were not available for anyone to move into because the residents actually live in that home. They own that home. And it's simply not available on the rental pool or the sales pool. So straight away, the 1 million homes goes down to about 500,000 homes. Now from the remaining 500,000 homes, about 250,000 of those homes were actually holiday homes. And it is the right of every Australian that if they do own one home or renting another home, if they work hard over many, many years to be able to buy them and their family a holiday home, which they don't want anyone else to stay in, it is their right to absolutely do that. And so there's about 250,000 homes which are holiday homes. Now, what is the balance of the other 250,000 homes? Well, some homes are just not fit for human habitation because they're run down. Some homes are undergoing renovation, other homes have just been listed for sale and some homes have had the tenants just move out and of course there's some homes there which are available for rent which are currently being advertised for rent which are waiting for a tenant to move in and so that is the balance of the 250,000 homes. Now what I don't like about Max Chandler's comments is he sort of made you think that there were these elite uber rich Australians that were somehow hoarding 1 million homes and holding them back from needy Australian families. Now are there people out there that own three, four properties that have them all vacant, that just reserve them for themselves. Sure, I'm pretty sure we could find five or 10 people that are in that situation, but there are not hundreds of thousands of uber rich Australians hoarding up 1 million homes. It is complete misinformation and disinformation to suggest that there are 1 million homes that Australians could simply move into tomorrow. The reason why I feel that this is a really important issue is that we've got to be focused talking about supply. How do we build more homes and if we're not focused on building more homes we're not going to solve the rental crisis and we're not going to put a cap on the amount that house prices can grow by. Now lie number two. Lie number two is that negative gearing is making rents higher and negative gearing is making housing more expensive for all Australians. Now, some of the best intellectual minds in Australia have done deep studies on this. Now, Dr. Peter Tulip, a former Reserve Bank economist, he actually did a deep dive study into this and that study did find that negative gearing only added less than 1% to overall house price cost. And if you were to remove negative gearing, it would increase rents by at least two and a half percent. Now there are numerous studies that have been done on this. I put links to that in the description. Negative gearing is not the enemy. What is negative gearing? Negative gearing is when someone loses money and because they lost money, they don't have to pay taxes on their losses. So let me just give you an example. Let's say you've got someone with a $100,000 income. Now, normally they pay tax on that 100,000. Now, if they've got an investment property that collects 20,000 rent, 
that increases their taxable income from 100,000 to 120,000. So now, instead of paying tax on 100,000, they must pay tax on 120,000. However, what the government actually does and what the tax law does, it says if you make a loss on that investment property, you can reduce your taxable income. Now, I wanna give you an example. Let's say a property investor purchased a property where the weekly repayment on the loan was $600 a week. But let's imagine the maximum amount of rent they got on that property was just $300. That would then be a $300 loss per week on that property. Therefore, a $300 loss per week is about a $15,000 to $16,000 loss per year for them owning that property. And I haven't even thrown in maintenance costs, insurance costs, council fees, water fees, or anything like that. So the total loss on the property could be about $20,000. Now, if the loss is $20,000, what the government allows you to do is say, hey, okay, your salary was 100 grand, your rental income was 20 grand, your weekly losses added up to 20,000, so we're not gonna tax you on 120,000, we're gonna offset those losses you made over here against your taxable income, which was 120,000. Let's bring the taxable income down to 100,000. Let's tax you on 100,000 because you made losses here. Now, negative gearing is actually reducing your tax when you've made a loss. So for people to say that somehow we're giving up all of these tax deductions and we're losing out on all of this tax, you know, hundreds of billions of tax, it is a fictional made up number because you never would have had those taxes unless that person went out and actually invested into a property. Now what's actually interesting is the full negative gearing benefit of getting those tax deductions is only applicable on brand new property. So negative gearing highly incentivize property investors to build a brand new property. And the property investor gets the 600, 700, $800,000 together to actually go out and build that property. Now that is a good thing for the country because what it means is more housing supply is being brought onto the market, which ultimately is the key to reducing rents and keeping house prices under control. So negative gearing is the enemy of precisely no one. In fact, if you were to remove negative gearing, that would mean that a property investor could potentially buy a property that they were making a loss on and they don't want to make the loss. So what they're going to do, they're going to increase the rents to cover that loss. So because they're not getting a negative gearing benefit, if the repayments on the house was $600 and they were only collecting $300 in rent, they're simply going to increase the rent to cover that loss rather than relying on the tax benefit. Therefore, negative gearing is the friend of renters. And I promise you that if you were to remove negative gearing, rents will immediately go up. And if you were to remove negative gearing, you would have less brand new property being built and constructed, adding to the housing supply. So negative gearing is the friend of everyone. Now, lie number three is to do with capital gains tax. So it was also said that capital gains tax is an incentive to property investors, which pushes up the price of property. Now, I want you to really think about this for a moment. If we do not have property investors building and constructing brand new property, then we're going to have a housing shortage. And if you think that the government has the money to go out and build all this housing, where are they gonna get the hundreds of billions of dollars to do it, to build housing and then to manage it, to repair it and to maintenance it? How are we gonna get all of this money? We've already seen with the NDIS program started out at a few billion dollars and now it's multi, multi, multi billion dollar program where the costs have absolutely blown out and that has been recognized even by the Labor Party who initially conceived of the NDIS. So if we were to go down the path of mass social housing and building all this affordable property that the government subsidizes, you have to understand that a government subsidy is a subsidy which is paid for by tax money. Tax money has to come from somewhere. It has to come from working people. So all that is going to create 
is that we need to take more money from highly productive people in the economy, steal from them, take their money, to put it into this so-called social housing where the costs will 100% blow out and where you're going to have bureaucrats, government employees, which really don't care whether or not fixing a tap costs $50 or fixing a tap costs $500, running the show and blowing out all the costs. You see, if you've got a property investor where a tap needs to be fixed, it's their money. So they're going to shop around what is the cheapest, best way that I can get that tap fixed. Whereas if you've got a government employee, it's not their money to repair that tab, they're gonna sign off on any old quote that they get on their desk that morning. So guys, these are the three big lies running around at the moment about property. Lie number one, we've got a million homes hoarded by the Uber rich, making poor Australians even poorer. That is an absolute lie. Lie number two and three, that negative gearing and capital gains tax deductions are creating a scenario where rents are higher and it's harder to buy your first home. This is also a lie. Thank you. For more videos like this, please click like and subscribe for more information around the property market. Thank you.